Okay, so this is Lost Citadel, uh, number two, uh, Shadow Dark, and the party is three veterans that have been into the Lost Citadel previously. They are carousing in between their forays into the dungeon. Each of them has spent 10 gold for a night of worthy drinking. So each of you get to individually roll a D8 with no modifier. So go ahead and do that and roll 20. Okay, we'll start with Benin. Oh, let uh, me change my character. Oh yeah, change like, your character's name. So fast beat. Fast Feet gets a two. So Fast Feet, you're locked in the stocks for a D4 days. <laughs> you find 20% of your remaining wealth for setting a building on fire, and you gain, and you gain two XPs. <clears throat> Sounds like you had fun. Yeah. I did. Uh, Bram, you lost track of him, but you wake up blearily in your bed. You gain two XPs. And lastly, uh. Amriel. You had an adventure. You survived a blindfolded knife-throwing demonstration unscathed. You gain four XPs and a luck token. Luck, I think luck resets every day, so I'm going to give you, Brahm, a luck token and remove it from the other two. And uh, you met, one or more of you met Malkor in your uh, revelry and carousing. So let's start with some character introductions. We'll start with Amriel. Just give a real brief description of your character. Uh, Amriel is an uh, elderly elf. Uh, she's uh, dressed in robes, as you might expect, and she has her. Uh, she she brings her cat along with her on her adventures. She sometimes talks to it, and uh, it, her whole purpose in being here is she has a sick granddaughter. The local apothecary appointed her to this dungeon because she couldn't afford the medicine. So the apothecary is making her go work for it. That's it. Bram. <clears throat> uh, Bram is a. Um... Uh, a redeemed street urchin uh, who was brought to uh, uh, who was saved by the order of St. Teregnus and he's devoted his life to serving the poor and helping people when he's not carousing or adventuring and <laughs> uh, Bram is a priest of St. Teregnus Fast Feet Fast Feet is another street urchin who uh, grew up and is trying to find his fortune but uh, apparently he spent all his money carousing last night and is now ready to go back for another attempt at wealth. He's quick, and he's not the healthiest fellow around. Halfling. Malcor. Uh, Malcor is a human male, uh, left his life as a jeweler in the city to kind of live with nature. Uh, playing him kind of more of like a druid priest. Um, and yeah, he is. he has heard some rumors about this uh, place, and he's wants to explore it. I like the butterfly. Very good. So you guys reassemble at the um, Lost Citadel. What good do you want to do when you get there? Tom, I wanted to buy another torch. Um, I replaced my other two. I want to get a third. You bet. And drop, and then just drop. Get rid of my um, uh, spikes, my ten spikes, because I probably won't need them. So Sounds somebody good. Somebody else has, has them. Consider it done. Great. Okay, you uh, walk off into the arid scrubland far away from the city where you uh, were carousing the last several days. The cicadas buzz. It's hot. It's arid. You see ahead of you the thick, sandy blocks and coral red columns that support the rooftops of the Lost Citadel. Um, what do you want to do? Uh, well, uh, gentlemen, w this is the, the way we entered before, uh, but we exited from another um, entrance to the dungeon. And if I seem to recall, there was a courtyard um, so we actually have two other ways we might try to enter if we want. Um, if we enter through the, the way we exited before, I, I think that puts us closer to the Minotaur that we saw. I'm kind of uh, inclined to go yeah. in and to the right. I was, uh, down that, that staircase. was down some stairs. Okay. Was kind of, yeah. yeah, we never explored that way. Okay. And we should try to steer clear of them. If you agree to go in and to the right, who of you wants to light up some light sources? So I, I have the light spell. Nice. Um, I, after listening to you guys play, I thought maybe that would be a good idea. <laughs> um, so I don't know if it's better to light, keep lighting using that until I can't use it anymore, like I fail, or use our torches up and then kind of rely on that to get us out. I'm going to suggest you light and we use one person mm -hmm. with a torch. Okay. To um, cover both ends of all the right. party. Okay, then I will make your light I'll check. It's just the, just click your token, and, and you're going to click the light button. This is the second one from the right. Brahm will fire up with the torch. And Brahm... Okay, your light is successful. So I'm going to drag a torch to you, Malcor, 
So to move you and your torch at the same time, you just uh, drag across your square, basically like you're doing a multi-select in, um, in a Windows program to get the torch that's sitting behind you. Torch behind you, here we go. Okay, so you guys got some torches and you kick open the door, I assume, and then we'll roll initiative after you do that. Or actually, you probably want to have a leader. Who's going to go in front? There's not a lot of the great tanks in our party, but mm-hmm. Brom probably has the best AC, so. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go first with my Brom. torch. I'll put Brom in front, I'll remove Kellek, and I'll put Amriel and Fast Feet in the middle. So, Brom, take your turn. All right, hearing the uh, general consensus to go in and explore to the to the right, I'll move into the room. I think you dropped your torch. Oh, do the thing there. Okay, move into the room. Um, nothing. So let me let me refresh your memory on what this room looks like. Floor to ceiling murals are painted in vibrant jewel tones on the north wall. The pillars are red. They're tapered. They're banded in black marble at the top and the bottom. The ceiling's about twenty feet above your head. Um, the corners are in darkness. Uh, the murals depict people in white robes kneeling in a room of red pillars before a colossal onyx bowl with horns lowered. And you found a hidden niche behind that bowl the first time you came here where you pulled out a silver inlaid bullhorn. Mm-hmm. You've since sold that or given it to uh, the tavern owner who you're in debt to, probably. Um, Is somebody going to draw a map as we go along? Should I do that? Or? I have a map that I had from the last session. I was just going to continue using that. Love it. Thank you. Great. Uh-huh. Um, and I'll move up to the door okay. and inspect it. Okay. The door is not trapped. Amriel, your turn. Uh, I'm going to move into the room here. Um, I already looked. I, I feel like I've um, looked at all this stuff before. Um, I'm, I'm going to try second time's a charm. I'm going to try uh, casting detect magic and doing a scan of the room. Okay. Try your detect magic roll. You succeed and you sense no magic within the room. I then, do not sense any arcane powers here. Fast feet, your turn. Oh, and the torches have been lit, so we'll say it was 10 10 when we lit the torches. So at uh, 10 after the hour, they're going to go out. Then after Amriel, fast feet's going. Anything else fast? Yep. I'm going to go open that door and go here. Okay. Of course, I can't see yet, so <laughs> no. that's not. I'm getting over my skis. <laughs> Done. Malcor, your turn. I'll just move up, I guess, to meet the rest of the party. From out of the darkness behind you steps a halfling. A halfling that some of you have recall seeing in the city. Uh, he is a famous um, tomb robber named Muggins Greenbottle. And he looks at you all, and he kind of squints his eyes with the darkness. Looks like he might have been like sleeping in the corner. You're not sure. Uh, <laughs> he was in the southwest corner. Anyway, he stands up, he brushes off his clothes, and he starts heading towards the door. And he says, the red devil will find you. One way or another. Be careful in there, gentlemen. <clears throat> and then Hold Muggins. On there. Hold on there. Who are you? Uh, I think I've seen you before. I'm Muggins Greenbottle. You guys, you that one that went ahead of you is the one who started the place on fire, isn't he? <laughs> I didn't I, mean to do it. It was a dare. Well, be cautious in here. That uh, red devil, he prowls all the halls. The horned red devil, do the you mean? The horned red devil. Yep. Yes. Oh, we met him. We have a small experience with him. Good luck, gentlemen. Why are you here? I was uh, looking for treasure, and then I might have drank a little too much, and my torch ran out, and I fell asleep. (laughs) Probably not the smartest thing I've done. Oh, not. I'd say you were uh, very fortunate uh, to still be alive. Yep. Watch out for the spiders, too. See ya. And he (laughs) uh, walks on off. All right. Okay, Malcor, you moved in. Anything else for your action, Malcor? Uh, Nope, I think I'm good. Rom, your turn. I probably moved down to right about uh, ahead of okay. last week. So you see a room ahead, and it sparkles dazzlingly, dazzlingly uh, which allows your torch to illuminate more of the room. Um, mm-hmm. You see the walls are flecked with countless smooth shards of quartz, and you also see big white bundles, like man-sized bundles, in several of the corners. Those are those uh, roughly circular forms in the various corners of the room. The light here is so dazzling, dazzlingly reflective. I need you to make a dex check to not be blinded when you step in. DC 12. I lift, I lift my hands up in front of my eyes. Let's see if it's in time. DC 12. Dex check. Yep, you do. It's not blinded. Time. So you squint your eyes, you cover your eyes, you can warn past people behind you. Anything else? I, I warn everybody behind me. Yep. Um, no, I'm 
Let's see, 30. Uh, just double move, maybe in, more into the center of the room. Hey. Uh, and be careful. Squint your eyes when you come in. It's bright in here. Amriel, your turn. Uh, she's going to move up here. Uh, she doesn't really have a very good view. Uh, she kind of uh, shades her eyes, and she's going to uh, double move. Okay. So you pinch here. Here you like. Then fast feet. And, okay. But I, I just have one question. Do yeah. I sense any magic in this room? No, you do not. Oh, go to make your focus check. Okay. Is that just the, the same roll? Same roll, yeah. Okay. Oops. Oh, Shade my eyes, walk to one of these bundles, and take a look at it. Okay, so the bundle is um, man-sized, cocooned in webbing is what it is. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, silk spider webs, cocoon, a man-sized creature. I look up. <laughs> no spiders above you. Now, Corey, your turn. Um, a move is what? Six? Is that correct? Yeah, six squares on a move, and you can double move if you take no action. Okay. So every time on your turn, if you say double move, I'll just immediately go to the next person. But if you want to do an action, move, and then tell me what action you want. Okay, I will just double move. All right. Next is Brom. <clears throat> Brom will move to... Um... To, to this one and to also investigate what's what could be possibly wrapped up in this thing okay if i have to i'll use my sword to cut the ribs and um it is uh when you cut your sword or you cut the webbing away with your sword you see a beast man uh who is dead oh. cocooned in the webbing uh the beast men are you ran into them before they yep. have gray fur and bestial facial appearance almost like Oh, what do I want to say? Not Minotaur all the way, but partially between man and Minotaur. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, I announce I say a, a dead beast man in these webs. I think maybe the Attercaps uh, did this since they're they seem to be mortal enemies. Who held my torch there? Amriel, your turn. Uh, she's going to move further in the room, see what everyone's talking about. So those little things that are kind of oblong are the wrapped up human sized bundles. Five of them you can see in the various corners of the room. Okay. Um, she, well, she's kind of far from all of these. She's gonna look around and see if any of them, uh, if, from from where she's standing, if any of them might still be alive. Uh, you cannot tell. Uh, maybe a okay. closer inspection would reveal it. Rom, you don't think the one you're looking at is alive? After Amriel, fast feet. Okay. Well, I'll cut uh, mine loose. Okay. Let's see if yours is alive. Uh, nope, a dead beast man. Okay. Malcor, your turn. Uh, well, I'll move in. There we go. I can get to there with a move. Can I check that? Yeah, you can. That one? You can cut away webbing and or peel it away. And when you do, you find a dead beast man. Ah, oh. that round is over. Let's see if there's any random encounters. No, and then Brom, your turn. Uh, do a mover here and cut away the webs here. All right, there you find a dead beast man. And then Amriel, your turn. Okay. Uh, which one hasn't been checked yet? This one? South of you, yeah. All right. Um, she always gets in trouble when she takes initiative, but she's going to uh, use her knife and cut open this one. You find a breeze man that's uh, coughing and sputtering when you pull the webs away, and he looks at you wild-eyed, and he whispers in a harsh whisper, free me, free me. And, and, she, and she says, oh, okay. Uh, she'll respond in, um, I think it's beast man language, is uh, Athanian. Say, I will do so, and I start cutting the webbing from him. Okay. After you... Okay, he's free, and he doesn't attack or anything like that, and um, you guys are pretty quiet, so let's make a reaction check for him. Um, any of you four want to step up to try and calm him, or will, will. Amriel's charisma be used? I'll step up and try to calm him with... Okay. Um, so you could add two to the roll with your 14 charisma, 2d6 is... A seven. Ooh. Just enough to get you up to suspicious rather than hostile, which is good. <laughs> so he's suspicious of you all, um, and he just harshly whispers. He says, um, be cautious. There are spider creatures about. And let's see, that and was Amriel's well, turn. You moved and him, Fred yeah. freed him. Ask Pete, your turn. Yeah, yeah, we haven't freed the one furthest south, right? Um, actually, you have. Everything's been freed now. Oh, okay. Um, then I suggest we start going towards the exits. Okay. Malcor, your turn. Double move. Okay, with the light getting up there, fast feet uh, from Malcor stepping up behind you, you can see that the cavern to the east is full of webbing, sticky-looking webbing. 
You don't see any spider creatures in there. And then there's stairs up to the north. And then that rounds over. And Brom, your turn. Mm-hmm. I describe an adder cap, what I saw last time I was here. Mm-hmm. To the beast man, say, is, this, is that what you mean by spiders? Yes. Yeah. Big bellied, okay. purple furred, multi eyed things. And so we want to try and light the webbing on fire. That's the question. So you've got mm-hmm. him mostly freed, Amriel, and he's suspicious of you guys. <clears throat> and he's like, um, I will return to my people now. And he will try and leave if you'll let him. Uh, before he goes, I, I'm going to quickly uh, pull out a, a ration. Okay. And I'm going to hand it to him and I say, um, would you would you consider helping us? I can, I can give you more. Um, he eats it and pretty greedily at that. Like he's been mm-hmm. starving. And he says, I will go with you. Okay. You can see okay. he's pretty badly wounded, uh, but he will basically on your turn move and move beside you, Amory. So, okay. Brom, um, your turn. If, what do you want? If that was my action, I'd like to, to move up a little further. Oh, no, that was uh, Brom's turn still. You're next. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I, already did my, I did an action already, I think. I was okay. talking to him. And Got it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move up. If he gets, at some point, I might want to give him a cure wounds, but okay. we'll see. Amory, I'll go ahead. I'm going to move up and uh, move to here. And uh, let's see here. What, 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 what do we... Do I see anything of interest to... Oh, this is the cave with all the webs? Yeah, as soon as you get past the narrowest point of the passage into that cave, it starts filling up with webbing. There's webs all okay. along the floor and along the walls and the ceiling. I'll, I'll say it's not the foes that you see that are the most dangerous. It's the ones you don't see, and I'm done. Then fast feet. Okay, I don't want to get over... It. Um, I think we should go away from the... Uh the um, creatures, but we need some light up here, so... Oh, Corey, go ahead. Uh, I will just... I won't double move, but I'll just move up ahead. All right. That's not good. No, not good at all. Um, We're going to come out of round by round, and we're going to go into initiative, because Malcor, as soon as you step into the room right here, uh, you see... Well, first of all, let me show you what you see in the room. <clears throat> there is a skeleton pinned to the wall. Its hands are clasped around a spear... That's been thrust through its rib cage and has pinned it to the wall. Um, the walls are chipped mosaics of cavorting dolphins, and there are on pegs on the same wall as the skeleton white robes hanging. The unfortunate thing for you is a cave creeper has been awakened by your light and rushes to feast on your on you all, and boom, it's on the ceiling. When you first see it, and you first hear it start to move, so everyone roll initiative. Oh no, time to roll some new characters here shortly. (laughs) All right. Uh, Fast speed, you see it uh, before it even barely starts to move, and you beat it on initiative. What do you want to do, fast speed? Um, I'm going to, let's see. I can open the door as a free action, right? Correct. Okay. I'm going to go up here. That's five movement. No, four movement. I'm going to fire a, a short bow arrow at it. Okay. Miss I'm going four. to right, open six. the door, and then I'm going to go into the next room. After fast feet comes the creeper. It climbs down the wall and scuttles across the floor, multi-attacking uh, tentacles and bite on poor Malcor. Tentacles hit armor class 21 for four bludgeoning. I'm down. Paralyzed Malcor. Uh, 12 constitution check Malcor to negate the paralyzation. Uh, so that fails. So you are paralyzed. It grabs Malcor's corpse and then starts dragging it back toward the wall. So there's that round and it's done. Malcor, first thing you do is you roll a death um, timer roll. So click your token, click the A11 slash H2 button. Um, so it's a 1d4, right? And I have a minus four on con, so yeah. I don't think I can roll it. You can say it's going to be a one. Okay. Yeah. So the, your death timer is going right now. That's what you do is put a red one. And on your next turn, that'll tick down to zero. So if you're not saved by that, and you should have your hit points to, or change your hit points to zero. Uh, that's Malcor. Uh, Bra, your turn. Oh, and I don't know if it's supposed to work this way or not. If you get a death save right away, or if you did a death save on subsequent turns. So let's do a death save now. So Malcor, roll straight D20. If you did 20, you come back to life. Okay. Uh, Brom, you turn. Uh, so I I see my friend uh, scream out and then drop over and get dragged away. So I'm going to move up into the room so I can see. 
25. I'm going to go to here. And as he's being dragged by this creeper, I reach out and touch his foot and cast Cure Wounds. Look at hey. that. So you actually gonna... cure him for eight. If he, if I cure him for uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it mattered. I, I double that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it seems that uh, St. Uh, Teragnus really wanted me to heal him. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and then, not being too foolish, I'm going to back off. Oh, and unfortunately, you failed your um, paralyzation check, didn't you? And it's a D4 round, so... Yes. Let's see how many rounds that was going to be. It's going to be three rounds, so let's do a countdown timer on that as well. That happened before your turn, so we use the green. So on your turn, it take down to two rounds left. So you're, it'll take down to one, your next start, your next turn, and then zero, the start, your next turn. Can I remove the other counter since I've been... You may, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's it for Bob. Uh, next goes Amriel. Um, I think, well, maybe I didn't see it here. I'm going to move up to here. Okay. Oh, I can see it now. Oh, it's large sized. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big bug. It's really big. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to put it to sleep. Uh, here's my roll. Can I do it from here? Five. Ten. You can, yeah. Yep. Oh, it nice. Is. Uh, interesting. So normally you'd be limited to level two creatures falling asleep, uh, but we'll say that 20 makes it level four. Nice. Oh, I don't know what else it would do otherwise. And this thing is a level four creature. So asleep it goes. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Well done. Yeah, it's just like my grandchild, little June bug. I just sing to her and she just falls asleep. All right. Um, we'll come out of the combat now. Uh, your your guys are behind you. Um. And that sleep spell has no duration, as far as I know. It just is asleep until you injure it or vigorously shake it. Mm. Which we will do neither. Which you will do neither. <laughs> 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 okay, now we'll come back into the initiative. Um, you got a couple rounds where Malcor is... He, he, he comes back before we'll start the initiative rolling. So, let's go with uh, the same order then. Brom, what would you like to do as soon as Malcor regains consciousness? Uh... uh... I'll quickly explain to him the situation. Say, don't don't mess with the bug. He's, he'll be asleep for a, a long time. And then I'll do a quick search of over here by the where the skeleton is. But I'm just I don't so, know. I can't really detect undead, but I can. I don't. I'm just searching the skeleton, the spear, just to see what I can see over here. Gotcha. So there's that spear that he's grasping with his hands. He's wearing decayed crimson dyed leather armor. He has a bronze short sword hanging from his belt. Um, the spear's driven deep into the stone, and yeah, we'll that's that. it with the skeleton and the spear. There are also in this room robes along that wall. So after mm -hmm. Brom is Vaspi. You can move too if you want, Brom. Oops. I move up by the door so Vaspi has more light. Okay. Don't forget your light. Oh, there it is. Okay. I'll uh, go in and take a robe. Okay. Vaspi, you grab a robe. You I got a robe. Right. It's musty. It's rotten. Been here a long time, you think. There is a total of four of them on the wall. Mm. After fast, well, can't hurt. Amriel, your turn. Or can it? Uh, uh, is it on the west wall, the skeleton west, and the robes? The west wall, yep. All right. I'm going to move over there. I'm going to take that um, bronze sword. Okay. And uh, and and I don't know, how, you know, how many actions it takes to grab an item and, and take a robe if I can. But sure, you can grab a sword and a robe. Okay. And then okay. Ma Malcor, your turn. So Malcor, you you uh, begin consciousness. You told not to bug. Move the bug and your turn. Uh, so I'll double move, but a part of that I'll go grab one of the robes. Okay. And then, so that'll be like one, two, three, four. And don't forget your torch, which is on the ground over there where you were paralyzed. Oh, yep. You want to put the torch underneath you in the same square as you. That way you can move safely and freely. Uh, You've got like five people stacked up in one spot here right now. So I'll put your torch under you, and I'll put the torch into Brom. I'll move fast speed to there. So what you do it is like you left click and drag across you and your character. Oops, the torch got moved again. Okay, so like I'd start in the square above you and drag down to your square, and it'll pick up you and the torch. If you left click and drag, you can get the two mm -hmm. of you that way. Somehow you still got the other torch. That's okay. I'll move it back. Yeah. So go ahead, Malcor. You should be able to go now if you drag across just you and your square. Hmm. I don't know what's going on with that other torch. Why it keeps grabbing it. I'll move you there. Now drag across you in your square. You should be good. Yeah. That seems to be working. I can't. You're throw. good. Yeah, you're good. And so I'll you, stop there. You want to stop there? Okay. Uh, round is over. Um, see if there's any monsters. And Brahm, your turn. Uh, I'm going to grab uh, the, the last robe. All right. One, two, three, four, five. So 25 feet of movement to go get the robe. Come back to where you're at. You got five feet left plus a whole another action. Move up to the, the intersection. All right. So don't forget your torch. After Brahm is fast feet. 
So all the torches are spoken for now, fast feet. All right, double moving up to here. Then Amriel. Now I know what happened to the other guy last session where he got lost in the dark. Um, <laughs> but I know where everyone went. <laughs> um, 15, and I'm going to go... I'm going to go up to here, and I'm going to try to hand to Malcor this bronze sword, say, hey, um, you're probably a little stronger than me. Um, you, you want to take this? Sure. All okay. right. Yeah. After Amriel, Malcor, your turn. Did we not grab the spear? You did not. Still. Yeah, I have a feeling that skeleton will come alive if we grab that spear. That is a concern. Yeah. Or he'll make a lot of noise clattering to the ground. It'll fall and make bone noises, and the bug will awaken. Mm-hmm. Did you have time to, were you able to detect magic in this, that last room, or had it expired? It, it had expired, but I can, if, if someone with light wants to hang back, I can do so on my next turn. That Could might be, be good. Now. Yeah, I'll go back so that you can get me and the sword and the spear, so we can... I like it. Uh, Malcor, what are you doing this round? Moving? Yeah, back into here. Okay, and let's see if there's any water monsters, then Brom, your turn. Uh, Brom will move up uh, to fast feet. See what he sees there. A door and a thing. Then fast feet. I'm going to double move okay. to here and then back to the corner. That's good. Fast feet. See anything down there? Uh, just another corridor. It goes down and bends to the north. Okay. We need to gather up after the detect magic, so I'm holding tight. All right, Amriel, your turn. Okay. I'm going to move up so I can see the spot. And uh, I'm going to try casting Detect Magic now. Again. Go for it. Yep. Okay. It's back up. And there's no magic in this room. And the okay. sword? Sword not magical. Okay. Can I move my remaining movement back you can. up? Yep. You can move in Shadow Dark. You move before and after your action. Just like Ivy. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Malcor. Turn. Uh, just, oh, and uh, for your reference, uh, Ryan, moving through creatures does not difficult terrain. Excellent. I'll just uh, move up. No wandering monsters. Brahm, your turn. <clears throat> Uh, do you want me to open the door just to see? Before listen at it. I get here. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll move up to the door and take a listen. All right. No sounds. Fast feet. Back in the door for traps. No traps. Need Done. Anything else? Done. Uh, Amriel. I move up, and uh, I'm going to listen down this north passage. No sound down there. Of course. Um, I'll just move. Rob. Okay. No sound, no traps. Open the door. Uh, can I let everybody know that uh, there's a court? I don't know who can see up here, but there's another corridor off to the right up here. Yep, you can let them know. I have to make a focus roll. <clears throat> From uh, looking into the hallway, you see to your left. Oh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. You see to your left, Brom, a statue of a bull towering 10 feet tall, made out of bronze, horns lowered for a charge. The hall's <laughs> about 10 feet wide, 15 feet high. Um, you saw a glint of green light off of, um, maybe some sort of gem embedded in the statue, the bull statue's forehead. Oh, this, this one, this one hasn't charged like the one we found before. Uh, and is there sand on the floor? No. But it's not charging. Um, uh, you see, step into the room, uh, roll a d6 for me, bro. Try and roll high. Six. Nothing happens when you step into the hallway. I say it's one of those trap all the hallways with a bull. I think Are there are other ways out. It goes to the north, and I can't see from here how far. It goes to the end of my light. Um, I know. I say fast feet. One of us, one of us has to go down and tie a rope around the around its legs. That's that's how we defeat these. I think. <laughs> I could be totally wrong. Uh, do you want me to do it? I'll do it. Okay, Rom, you go down there. You tie a rope around the legs of the bull, hoping mm-hmm. to stop it. Should it uh, yep. animate, you can have inspiration. i go back. Um, after you <laughs> are done, ask for your turn. All right, I'm going to go in. Can you get out of the way, Brom? Yeah, I have 30 feet of movement. I'm, I'm going to step back. If it's... Get out of the way. I'm going to try and pry loose that uh, gem there. Nice. Okay, you do. 120 gold piece of emerald you pry out of the bull's forehead. Sweet. Worth Sweet. Uh, one XP for all of you as well. All right, I'll keep track of the gold again. So, Tom, question. Yeah. Uh, how does leveling work? Because I would question. level. question. I think it probably would be out of the dungeon, but let's do it right now anyway. Oh. So, Amriel, is that you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, you, I think, just roll hit points and roll your talent. No, yep. talents don't come at second level. So, roll hit points and choose your spells. 
Okay. Uh, so hit points D4. is going to be yeah. With no D4, penalty for con. Yes, I get minus two. So unlikely, I'll get more than one. Oh no, no, there's no minuses for con. Oh, but you rolled a one anyway. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, there we go. <laughs> cursed myself. I have double, I am twice as healthy now. Yeah, sweet. So you can and update your hit points and then pick your spell, and you're done leveling, I think. It, no, you roll on the talent table, don't you? Uh, only at odd levels. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then your All XP's right. reset to zero, and you'll need 20 to get to third level. How many hit XP did you get carousing? Is that you why you're five? Up? Yeah. yeah. Five? five? Yeah. Four. yeah. Wow. Well, you right, get, so no four. And we got four. Just a tier one, right? Yep. One more tier one. Okay. Uh, uh, that was fast feet. You got the gem. Nicely okay. done. Fast feet. Amriel, your turn. Well, uh, I'm going to. Should I roll my focus at the beginning of the turn? Yes. I think that's when we do it. Okay, here's that. Made it. Uh, I am going to. One, two, three. Poke my head in here. Look at that statue. Look up and down the hall. See if anything's magical. Oh. Uh, nothing magical. Okay. Uh, is. I can't see to the end. Is is this a dead end both ways? Nothing with nothing within thirty feet is magical, so you it's you don't know. Okay, I I, I say uh, there's nothing magical in here. I'm gonna step back. Uh, I'm gonna double move back to here. I'm done. Then Malcor, are we headed back this this way, or are we gonna go north from? You guys, north? guys with the light, decide. I was oh. gonna check. I was gonna check this way first, but okay. We have a couple different ways to go, so it could just be a trapped hallway. The other one I dead ended, but I'm not sure about this one. So I just double checked focus for us, and you make the check at the start of your turn. Uh, the check is as if casting a spell. Yeah, so it's basically the start of each of your turns. Okay, Malcor, uh, double moving. No, actually, I was. Uh, I'll stop. I can't remember if it was here or here, but um, can I? search in here for mm -hmm. yeah you search basically right around you so just a stone wall to your right uh nothing there that you can see nothing on the floor around you okay After yeah, that, or that rounds over rom your turn i'm gonna move in uh, and go north to see if i can see where this hallway goes one two three don't forget your light. Uh, oh yeah oops six i say the quarter continues and there's a door up here all right anything else brom no um, double move. Fast feet. Double move up to the door. Done. So at the end of the hallway, Brom, you see that there's deep holes embedded into the north wall. Like, that's where the bull would charge to. Um, <laughs> so, nice. luckily you disabled it. Fast feet, you get to the door with double move. Amriel, your turn. Uh, by the way, I, I did take a magic missile. Nice. Uh, here's my detect magic. Focus. Still going. Still going. Still going. Gonna, Good job. I think I'm going to double move. To up to about there. Okay. Uh, Malcor. I'll just move up to uh, looking order here. All right. After Malcor. Uh, let's see if we get stir. No. Rom, your turn. <clears throat> I'm going to come down and listen at the door. No sound at the door. Fast at your turn. I hear nothing. Uh, check the door for traps. No traps on the door. Open it. You should be able to click it and it should open. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Big room. The light doesn't quite illuminate all of it. Uh, so move where you want. And then Amriel, your turn. Uh, I don't like these situations. Um, and any gonna, anytime you're in a situation where you want to wait for the light, just let me know and I can move you behind the light person. I'm going to just move to there. Um, and from what I can see in the room, see if I detect any magic in there. Oh, here's my detect magic. Roll. Still yep. going. Nice. Malcor, your turn. No magic that you can detect. Uh, now you can see the room, Malcor, with your torch lighting it up or your light spell lighting it up. Um, let's see. In this room, it's got uh, six that you can see square black plinths, each holding a simple terracotta bowl. The bowls um, are stamped with a seal that shows a warrior kneeling in a black rain. Arms and mouth open to the sky above. Anything it's, else? Uh, there's a ceiling. Like, is it an open? Like, uh, the... there is a ceiling above. Yeah, about twenty feet high. Okay. I got. I only got two more movement if I was going to take an action. So I'll just. Uh, I'll move in and stay here. Okay. After Malcor comes, Brom. Go ahead, Brom. I'll move into the room. So each of those black squares and each of the um, alcoves is the black plinth, plinth about waist high with a terracotta bowl on top of it. The bowls are empty. They're stamped with a seal that shows a warrior kneeling in the rain. 
The warrior's arms and mouth are open to the sky above. The chamber is not, however, open to the sky above. <clears throat> okay. I'll move um, up the one and search. Okay. And see if I can find anything. You don't find any secret compartments or niches or anything like that. Ask for your turn. Uh, go in. I want to go to one of these bowls. Are they all the same with the warrior and the rain? They are. Looks like all six are the same. I'm going to pour a little water in the bowl. Okay. Nothing happens when you do. Okay. Emeril, you're done. done. I uh, step over here and I turn to my uh, beast friend, beast man friend, and ask them if they know anything about this room. I don't know. It says, we got to watch out. The bull could find us. Oh, the bull can find us? The red devil. The red devil. Okay. So we should, we should go in the room and shut the door. We should go where? In the room and shut the door. Okay. Uh, I do that. All right. I come in, come into the room, wait for the, the beastman. Um, I'll, I'll get his name because I just want to call him. Hey, you roll and D. then I'll roll D. Hmm? Uh, let's see. That's not what his name is. Roll a D 10 for me. Yes. His name is Ludo. And, <laughs> Another Ludo. <laughs> and he's a stout drooling beast man. Yes. Well, it's a common name like Ivan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, and then you can and shut the door if you want. Door. Okay, after Amriel Malkor. Oh. Oh no, magic detection dead. Yeah. The what color are the terracotta bowls? Uh, kind of a reddish uh, clay color. So from your stories, uh, I remember something about a pool with some red water or something somewhere. Yeah, in the northwest chamber there was a pool of crimson water. Mm -hmm. they, Just an idea, maybe that. Maybe that's the water that needs to go in these if um, it was going to be water that did anything. But uh, for now, I'll just move up to the doors. Okay. Then, um, your turn. I'll actually pour a little water in the bowl in front of me and then get down on my knees mm -hmm. and mimic mimic the, the soldier. Got it. Um, arms up, mouth open, and see what happens. Okay. Nothing happens. Look in the bowl. It looks like it's still water. Then, fast feet. Okay. I'm going to be check one of these doors. Uh, no, not yet. I didn't think so. Uh, checking for traps. Listening. No, no traps. Uh, no sound either. Amriel, your turn. Okay. When I had detect magic going before, w w was I able to see these terracotta statues? You were not. Um, okay. You can cast it again, though. You haven't lost it yet. Yeah. I'm going to cast it again. Okay. Um, oh, now you've lost it. No. Uh, well, I, I got, I'm going to save my luck. I'll just move to uh, here. I'm done. All right, after Amriel, Malcor. I'll go ahead and listen to this other door, the okay. one to the south. No sound. And the checking for traps thing, can we do that because he's a thief? Uh, or... You can do it too. Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll check for traps. Yeah, no traps. And, you know, if you've only moved, opening a door is a free action. So if at any time after you've checked it, you want to open it, you can. Uh, you can even move through it. If you have movement. Just run into the darkness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. It looks like we're going to go through the north. I'll open the north. Can I open the north one? Yeah. That, click, click on that door thing and it should be able to open it. Oh, no, it's jammed. You find out when you try to open it, it's kind of jammed. Um, you don't think it's locked. It's just swollen in its uh, door frame. And a good strength check could probably push it open without being action. So that rounds over. Brom, your turn. Brom is... I'm all, I want to grab the, the thing and drink the water, but I'm, I'm that could be foolish. It's a good day to die. It's a good mm -hmm. day to die. Uh, I look, I, I get a smile on my face and look at the party. Should I, should I sip it? What do you say? L let me sense, uh, if it has magical properties first. Okay. Ask feet, go ahead. No, I'll wait for that. Okay. I'm going to go to the second door and check it. Listen. No traps, no sound. And it's swollen shut too. It is swollen shut oh, too. No. Straight checked open that one. Uh, Amber. All right. We need somebody with muscles to get us out of here. <laughs> uh, here's the roll. Oh. Oh, didn't you already oh. fail your detect? Oh, uh, no, that wasn't a focus, the last one. That was a failure on casting the spell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, you can't use so it? So you lose the spell. Oh, man. Oh, Ouch. oh the cast? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah I, I, okay, sorry, I, I was misguiding you. I wasn't able to cast it again. Um, <laughs> uh, how badly do we want to go through these doors? We do. We do. I think we should try to get one open. Does anybody have a crowbar? I do not. Um, but I, I could... Uh, Cast magic missile at it. <laughs> I don't think that'll work. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to muscle through it on my turn. Um, I, I'm going to, since I wasn't able to cast detect magic, I'm going to cast mage armor. Alrighty. Uh, then Malcor, your turn. 
Oh, I lost that one too. Oh no. I'm, I'm gonna use my luck on that. Okay. Go ahead and reroll. Ooh. Nice. Oh wow, you're armor class 18 for 10 rounds. Yeah. The new tank. Nice. Heck yeah. Two hit points, armor class 18. Yeah. No one comes close to you. <laughs> okay, Malcor. Okay. Which which door are we trying to go through, guys? Doesn't matter. Pick one. I'll this go. One. Let's go to the north one first. Okay, make a straight check. DC 12. So you click your token, click yes, 12 button for pink. Yes, yeah, 12. Nope. Mm, not able to do it with the nine, or no, a seven. After Malcor, that rounds over. Brom, your turn. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave the water alone for now, and I'll move up and, and try to open this door. Okay. Take your torch. I'll take mine. And that's a strength check. DC 12 strength check. Oh, there it is. I lost my uh, my band there for a second. Is no, uh, not able to budget from. Then pass feet. All right, what the hell? I can always try. I'll try and break it. Mm -hmm. DC 12 pass feet. Look See? at that. Look at that. I'm... Probably uh, applied some thievery to it somehow. Uh, Probably, it's... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's open now, fast feet. And you can use the remainder of your move if you want to keep going moving anywhere. And then uh, after you're done, Amriel, your turn. Um, do we want that southern door open? I can ask uh, Blue to just see if he can open it. Is that the one I opened? The north one. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell ask Pluto if he can try to open that southern door. He uh, nods that he will. You can finish your turn, and then I'll have him do his thing. Um, I don't know where I want to be. I don't want to be in front. I'm just gonna move over one. I'm done. Mm -hmm. He's unsuccessful. Okay. Uh, that's it. Pretty well. Now, go your turn. Uh, from what the beastman did, we hear what the beastman said about uh, they should come in and close the door, uh, or was that just between the two of them? Him and Amriel. Yeah. You probably just uh, you might have over that. He's been okay. very cautious this whole time. Uh, although he's so leaving a, it on. he's leaving a trail of drool everywhere you go, so that might yeah. be a bad thing. <laughs> um. So yeah, I wonder if. Oh, well, I'm sure I could. I was gonna say, I wonder if this thing can open doors. So maybe we should be closing, making sure we close doors behind us as we move forward. But. All move into the room or hallway. It looks like you see some deep gouges uh, where the hallway opens. The gouges are like uh, the horns of a bull embedded into the wall multiple times, um, but you see no bull ahead. All right, I'll describe the scene. Uh, so it looks like up ahead, a passageway goes left, and down there, there's a, probably another one of those bulls because there's holes in this this wall. Or it could be the real bull. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then Brom, your turn. Uh, Brom will move through the door uh, to, to shed some light here. Oh, I see where the holes are. Yeah, that's probably one of those things. I'll move up to here. Okay. If you want to peek around the corner, you can hold down the Alt key and just move your guy like halfway to the edge there. When you hold down the Alt key, it doesn't snap to a grid. So yep. you can see the hallways at least as long as you're light, unfortunately. Yes. Um, I'll say, I'll turn back and say, yeah, this looks like one of those bull corridors. I can't see the end. But we're on the we're on the far end. I don't know that we're gonna be able to um, do our rope trick. I'm out. Of, I love. I don't have any more rope. I only have one rope, and it's tied off on the other bulls. So maybe someone else has rope. We can do do the same thing. Okay. All right. Fast feet. We see the statue. You don't. So you see the deep holes in the wall to the right, uh, where I have the writing. To the left, the hallway extends as far as Brahm's light shines. Unfortunately, without any sign of a bull statue, but it, he can't see the end of the hall. Okay. You run across, roll a d6. Try to roll oh, high. Here it comes. Six. Four. All right. Nothing happens. Uh, that was fast feet. Emeril, your turn. Okay. I better catch up with my allies. That's four, six, and... Oh, the holes are here. Uh, well, I have high AC now. Uh, I'm going to double move to there. I'm done. Let's see. Start here. Two, six. These men runs across to the far side, too. Uh, Malcolm. Okay, I have a question. Could I, and let me get the party's opinion on this. If somebody could lend me an iron spike, could I cast light on it and then tie my rope around it so that I could throw it down the hallway I and then retract it? I don't see why not. Does that sound like a... I like the idea. Good idea to everybody? Sorry. I would even, even tie it to the end of a rope, but spike's a good idea too. No, that's what I was saying. Tie a rope to the spike, yep. Yep. Yeah. throw it down the hall, and then I can pull it back. Yeah. So sure can. Just, sure. If, 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 does anybody have a spike I can borrow? Because I don't. Oh, got I it. have one. I got okay. rid of mine for, for extra torch. So, yeah, this is what I'll do. I'll go. I don't want to stand on top you can, of Brom. You but... can stand there, take his spike. Brom, you got spikes? I don't. He does. Or you dropped them all, Brom? I, 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 left all my, 
yeah, I left them all at home, okay. so to speak. I can only have I don't have enough gear slots. Okay. Uh fast feet can, can toss you a spike if you yeah. want Malcor. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And then you can cast a light spell if you want. Oh it looks like did you do it? It looks like somebody already did it. I was ca I was clicking it to oh, see what oh, the, oh. see what it did. Uh but I'll have you do it to actually cast it. Success. Yeah. So, right. um, and in fact, this is a perfect time to reset the lights because you're four minutes out from the lights going out. So let mm -hmm. us take a break here too. So it's um, right. six after the hour. So we got a successful light spell cast by Malcor. Uh, Brom, did you want to light another torch? I uh, guess. Okay. So time out for these things will be 16 after the hour. And Malcor, after you light your torch, you want to toss it down the hall? I mean, spike. Correct. Yeah. All right. Unless you guys think it would be a better idea to... What would happen if I cast light on the rope itself? Mm, good question. It wouldn't be the whole length of the rope. It'd just be okay. a point that you could pick. Okay, then yeah, I'll do it on this way. Okay. Um, although that's not what the rules say, but we'll say that. Uh, one. And then if you want to peek around the corner, you can just hold the alt key down. And you can throw this about near range, so 30 feet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Throw it there. And you can see in the... Still a little bit in the shadows at the very end of the hall is a bull statue, 10 feet tall, bronze. Um, there's a skeleton stuck on its horns. You can't see if it's got an emerald like the other one did. And you see a passageway to the north, about mid-hall. And then you drag back your torch, or leave it there. Um, I will... Yeah, I'll drag it back. I'll okay. let everybody know what I saw and then drag it back. All right. <clears throat> so, so do we want to keep going this way, or... So you, Rom, your turn. I was on mute. Um, <clears throat> so, are we going north first before we go down to the end of the ball? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Everyone is already up there. All right, and Brahms probably going to okay. Ideally, if we can find a way to the other end of that hall with the ball. Right, right. And a tip for y'all is when you're moving, use your arrow keys. Select your token, then use your arrow keys. That will expose to you what you see every step of the way, because <clears throat> it should only be showing you what you see when you drop your token. And right. That yeah. way you'll know that hey, I'm gonna stop here mid. No, I don't want to go that far. So you want me to go down to the western corridor? See if I can make it. No, we were. I think we're gonna go north and try to find the other end of that hallway that comes out down there by the bull. If that makes sense. Okay. We want to avoid marching down the hallway towards the bull. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, Brom. When you get to there, you see um, a body on the ground, uh, purple, spindly humanoid. Face down. Better cap. You see pillars to the right, uh, painted in rich jewel tones. The first pair is red, the second pair is blue, the third pair is green, and then it stands into darkness. Uh, the thing on the ground is not moving at all. It looks like it might be dead. Uh, that's it. That's what you see. Anything else, Rom? Um, yeah. I want to move down and just look at the pillar. Okay. That's a, Actually, that's a double move. That's 35. Double move? Okay. After Brom, fast feet. Stop there, fast feet. As soon as you okay. as soon as you cross um, past this first pillar, uh, flammable items you carry ignite and start burning, and you immediately are burnt into unconsciousness and fall to the floor, dying. Oh no! Yikes! Uh, that's it for you, fast feet. Emriel, your turn. Oh my, this is not good. Who's um, up, Malcor? We have two people who can potentially heal, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then I'm going to move to here, and I don't want to disturb the body, but I want to see if it actually is dead, or maybe it's sleeping. We've seen other sleeping things here. Okay, it's an edder cap. When you get close, you can tell that its fur is scorched. Its mouth and chest are matted with salt water. Salt water rhyme, not water. It's got claw marks around its eyes. Looks like its own claws gouging at its eyes or around its eyes. Definitely dead. I, I say that to the group, and then I say, you know, these pillars, there's red in the front, so that could be the fire salt water. Maybe it, it douses you with the second set of pillars. Um, I don't know about the greens. It claws out his eyes. But, okay, so he's dead. He's not, like, edder caps aren't known for wearing or carrying anything normally, right? Mm, you don't see anything obvious on them. Okay. They like gold. Yeah, they do. Maybe uh, I'll, I'll, on my next turn, I'll check, I'll search it for gold. Okay, after Amriel Malcor. I will move forward to join the party. Okay, Malcor, roll D6 and try and roll high. You did. You can keep moving. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take an action, right? I'll double move. So, good. 
Let me back you up here, Macro. Go and back oh. up 10 feet to your left. So you come to here, you see that Fast Feet is on the ground, dying and on fire. Oh. Then can I use my action <laughs> to... Uh... Help me. Heal? <laughs> well, you don't know if healing would be good, because he's just going to be burning again as soon as you touch him to heal him. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Pull, then pull. Can I pull, pull him, him out? Him? Yeah, you can yeah. pull him back. Uh, you can have inspiration for getting him out of there. And you can even snuff out the flames. Uh, okay. And that's your action. All right. Then, uh, that's into that round. Rom, your turn. So now you have fast feet, not on fire anymore, but dying at your feet. Mm -hmm. I'll cast your wounds on fast feet. Okay, let's see if you can make it. You do. You're healing uh, back up fast feet. Thank you. you Want to move any, Rom? Um, probably not. I, did, I, did I notice, and it, did fire shoot out of the wall or out of the pillar? Or did I no, notice anything? No, he just like, um, just immolated without any and speaking of immolated without any assistance your torch now is lit fast feet too <laughs> yeah well that'll come in so let me uh move that there put his back oh nope and there you go. okay so fast feet you got a torch lying on the ground beside you uh, let's see what else your flint and steel on the happens rations are just charred a little bit but no big deal your arrows are burnt up they're no use anymore grappling hook's fine your rope it's thick enough it won't be burnt up short sword's fine Short bow's burnt up. Leather armor's fine. Yeah. So you lost your arrows, your short bow, and your torch is lit. <clears throat> and now, back to Brom. Um, hmm. As an Somebody... experiment, I grab the Ettercap's dead body and push it down through the pillars. Okay. As soon as it crosses the plane of the red pillars, it immolates and is on top. Aha! Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to leave it there burning or pull it back? Oh, pull it back. You have to kind of uh, douse it with a cloak or something to yeah, put the fire out. I will. So it looks like anything flammable. So if you went across there with hair on your body or anything flammable you're carrying, wow. it would light on fire. Hmm. Very dangerous. Um, but this is an opportunity for somebody with a bald, naked character. Yep. <laughs> you think if you uh, were to cut off your hair, at least uh, you might not catch on fire if you're naked. Really? Yep. I wonder what would happen if we approached this from the other end like if we came through the blue pillars for first and it drenched us in in water then went through the red ones you know maybe we're supposed to be coming at this from the other side oh no what about uh like if you cross between these two what if you go to the side of either one is that well, still fast, great fast feet went yeah. to the side and it still got him oh you went in the side yeah. okay well uh anyway. I'd, I'd be willing to cut my hair off and walk through naked but the problem is it wouldn't do us any good because then Everybody else would have to do it too. Well, you might be able to turn it off or find something, uh, or yeah, let's need to find a mech. Maybe there's a mechanism. Um, well, I can throw my uh, light spike down there. You you wouldn't be able to get it back. Well, he, the rope didn't get. Um, it just got singed. It was thick enough to burn all the way yeah. through. Oh, okay. Yeah, then try that. Rom, are y'all done? That. Rom, y'all done? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yep. Okay, fast feet. Okay. Well, um, well, I mean, anybody can do it, I guess. Fast feet, you can grab it from me if you want. Throw the rope? Yeah. He hands you his spike at the end of a rope. All right. I'm going to pitch it down uh, past the blue uh, You marker. can throw it up to 30 feet away. Okay. Want to do 30 feet? or? Yeah, sure. And Let's where have it go. Along the wall, down the middle? Uh, we'll do it down the middle. Okay, so you can see four sets of pillars in total. Uh, red, then blue, then green, then purple. And you see at the far end... Uh, a bronze great sword, brightly polished, blades sunken into a black marble altar. Oh, I bet we want that. <laughs> what what happened to the rope and spike when it passed through the? Uh... So uh, the fire causes it is causing it to char. Um, you don't see anything happen when it goes past the blue pillar, nor the green, nor the purple. But it is what? it is it... charring the whole way. So it's like. Um, it looks like if you went past the red, you'd be on fire the whole time, if you had anything flammable. This appears to be a, a holy place. Perhaps if we wore the robes that we found earlier, uh, it might hmm. signify that we're of uh, the proper religion. Raptors I was don't. carrying the robes. Did they light on fire? Um, yes, they did light on fire. Although oh, okay. not well, because they were all musty and mushy. You know, they're yeah. drenched in okay. water. And so they didn't really burn up like your other stuff did. Interesting. I mean, I'd be willing to cut my hair off and... Which leads to the point that you think if you're doused in water, you also might be safe. Right. Um, 
Uh, maybe that's what, what that room with all the water vases are for. Maybe. Put on oh, the robe, yeah. Put on the robes, douse yourself with water, and then... Well, you at least get past the fire pillars. I don't know what those other ones do, if anything. Well, the water ones probably put water on you. Something makes you claw your eyes out. <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, green <laughs> might be like a poison or something. or uh... Could be, Mr. Yuck. Hmm. Okay, well, we got to decide on something. Uh, why don't we tie a rope to whoever tries this so we can drag your body back? <laughs> we'll use the same one that we just... We'll drag that back and tie that rope around him. Who's going to... I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. Do we have water? Is that Brom talking? No, it's... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Malcor. Malcor, you want to douse yourself in water and wear the robes and take off all your other flammable stuff and go? Yes, with the rope tied with the around. rope tied to you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, rations include uh, water, so you have enough water to douse a person with if you use up one ration. I'll cast protection from evil on him as well before he goes. Okay, go to make your check. You hey, succeed. But I'll do it after, right before he's going. Okay. Because it doesn't last very long. <laughs> Malcor, do you have rations? You want to mark one off and douse yourself? Yeah, with water? I did. Yeah. So Got it. Okay. Uh, you're good to go then. You ready? All right. Yep. Okay. You step through. Things start to singe a little bit, but the water is holding. Um, so let's do, let's do, let's see, let's go in order here. We'll do Malcor first and then the rest of the party after Malcor. So Malcor, take your full action. Assume you're starting there for your turn. Okay. And do one square at a time and stop as soon as you cross the blue. I'll tell you what happens then. <clears throat> All right. All right. When you cross the blue, seawater fills your lungs. Oh no. You will drown in, roll a d6. Um, da, 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 da. also I should point out, that's nice. You got six rounds. So this is going to be your countdown on drowning to death. Six rounds. I should point out, um, you would have known this. So when fast feet went across and caught on fire, when the header cap went across and caught on fire, when you pulled them back through to the other side, the things that were on fire, you know, kept naturally burning, but it's like whatever was immolating them stopped. So it's like whatever is okay. causing an action when you cross a pillar line, you think maybe when you cross the other direction, it'll stop. Okay. So that's. Okay. 10 feet of movement so far, Malcor. You can keep going. It's 20 feet of movement. When you cross the green, um, all of a sudden you feel um, just overwhelmingly nauseous and sick to your stomach and sweating as if you've, you've been poisoned. Um, make a DC 12 constitution check or you will spend the rest of your turn retching. Okay. I will use my luck, my newly acquired luck on this. Oh, and the good news is you can use your luck after your roll. So you can oh, try sweet. it first and okay. see if you okay. make it. If not, you can use your luck. DC 12 con, check. So no success. Oh, no. You can use your luck and try again. Yep. Oh boy, you're not good at con. Nope. Nope. Okay, so you lose this turn. So you're you're done. This turn's over for you as you're there retching and dying inside <laughs> and drowning and cinched but not burning yet. <laughs> Brom, your turn. Wow. I'll try to, Well, I have to maintain my spell. Okay, make your focus check. You succeed. Chaotic beans disadvantage on attacks, hostile checks. Can't possess or beguile. Yeah, I'm okay. not sure if it's gonna help. Yeah, it doesn't help on anything yet. Just in case, who knows what that sword will do? Yeah. But, um, I guess I'm gonna maintain my grip on the, on the rope. Okay. To pull him back if I need to, but okay. I, other than that, I'm I'm good. And really, your turn. I I really don't know what I can do uh, in this particular case. Okay, fast feet. Um, oh, I do anything. And real, did you want to do anything? No. Okay, fast feet. Fast feet is going to sigh and start taking off uh, his flammable items. And okay. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> After fast feet's down, that rounds over. Malcor, count down your timer to five, and then make a con check. DC twelve. No Oof. success. What? So you're uh, retching that whole round. Brom, your turn. <clears throat> trying to think of a way to help here. I don't. I'm. Um, I'm just going to maintain. I'll pass for now. And then Amriel. I'm um, just mean a pass. Fast feet. Now, when the water came, it just appeared in his lungs, right? Yeah. There didn't seem to be any... Nothing. Countermeasure. No, huh? no countermeasure. Uh, wish I had a great idea. Can I make a, like a lasso with the rope and yeah. try and lasso him? Oh, he's already connected right. to yeah, a rope. Got a... Rom's got him on Oh, the okay. Do we want to pull him back? Or do we yeah. want to hope he makes a save? Him one more chance, and then we're gonna to have to pull him back because he's not gonna make it. We we'll have okay. to get somebody who can okay have a, a <laughs> who can take some poison. Drown. All right. Okay, that runs over Malcor. DC twelve con check. Can I give him my luck if he fails? Uh, yes, you may. And also right. count down one. Ooh, he made it. Oh, I got hey. it. Uh, nice. Count down to four, Malcor. That happened at the start of your turn, and then you can act normally. 
All right, so I can move. You can move normally. When you cross the purple, I'll let you know what happens. One more. And got that light right there. That's at the end of the rope that Fast Feet's holding. Well, no, I thought it was the same <laughs> rope. I thought we pulled the rope that had the light on it back and then tied that around. Oh, sure. That was, you can see yeah. that. Okay, so that's ropes with you. But the bad news is, Malcor, <laughs> when you cross the purple, you can no longer see. Oh, no. The world goes dark. So describe to me in terms of directions you want to move, where you want to go. And I have how I've used, You've I think, 10, 10 feet so far. Feet. Okay. So I'll just move forward 10 feet. Okay, you move forward 10 feet. You haven't run into anything yet. I'll move forward five more feet. All right. Stub your toe on the uh, black stone altar. Grab the believe. great sword. It's right yeah. in front of you. Uh, I'll to the try left, to... to the left. <laughs> I'll try to grab that great sword. Oh, you grab it. It seems to be stuck in place. It's a uh, 12 strength check to rest it free. You have to be King Arthur. All right. And whoever said they would offer me that luck if I didn't make it. I'll offer it okay. if you can't pull it All right. on the first shot. DC 12 strength check. I can't see my token to click oh. on it to <laughs> do that. <laughs> Just roll a manual D20. Oh, okay. I'll double check what your strength is. You're plus one, so you need a level. Nice. You did it. You grab the great sword, rest it free. You've moved 25 feet so far. You want to move back five feet to the north? That won't. Yeah, sure. Okay, yep. that's your turn. You guys see, he's got the sword with him. Uh, Brom, your turn. I start pulling on the rope to okay. drag him. You can use your yeah. action. See, he's used his move, so you won't be able to move him anymore this turn. But you can use your action to move him, and you move him at half that's speed. Quick. So one, two, three. So now you can see again, Malcor. Let me make it so you can see. All right. Da -da -da -da. Light on. Save. And then. Uh, Amriel, Malcor can't be moved anymore, but what do you want to do on your turn? I'm going to cheer him on. <laughs> Fast feet. Same. All right, then Malcor, you're still poisoned, so make a DC 12 con check. Oh, count down your, your um, drowning by one, down to three. And then DC 12 con check. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, so, no, it's a critical fail, though. I don't think Does that matter? matters necessarily. Oh, okay. He just lost his turn still anyway. Okay, uh, Malcor has lost his turn. Braum, your turn. Uh, pull him. Pull him. Three. Pull him to there. And now the poison's gone, and you're no longer drowning, and you can get out. And you guys have the great sword and three XPs. Wow. Three XPs. Three That's XPs. A lot of us are going to level. So if you leveled, go and roll your hit points and roll your. Uh, there's no talent or anything, so you can choose spells if you got them and roll your hit points if you got them. We revert back to zero and put 20 for the next level. Right? Correct. Right. All right, everybody, think four. Oh! <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I said you were going to think four. All right, character sheet here. Okay. Back in roll 20. Clerics are priests or D6? D6 for a priest, yeah. And, and no penalty go. or bonus for con. Which is cool, I think, yeah. All right, here I go. D6, three. Hey, I didn't get a That's one. Good. That's good. Awesome. Welcome, Tank. A little more hardy. Five hit points now. Okay. Uh, the, the sword is a great sword. Um... Highly polished bronze, uh, definitely fine craftsmanship. You're pretty sure magical. Uh, yeah, I don't anyone, think any of us can use it. <laughs> I don't think anyone's trained with a great sword, though, huh? Okay. Uh, do you, no, want, do you have a spot to carry it in? I do. Okay. okay. You got the great sword. And let's go back into exploration, and we'll do Brom. Okay. Level two. I'm not sure what spell I want, but I'll uh, I'll get back to that in a minute. I'll update your um, points for you up to four. Or no, you roll five. three up to five. So um, I will go to. Uh, there's we didn't see any method of egress at the bottom here, but it probably doesn't matter. Correct. Yeah, there's no way out of the room. It looks like it dead ended at that oh, obelisk. That's good. It'd be too dangerous to go look at it anyway. Back to here. Uh, are we gonna rush the bull and try to tie off its legs? Yeah, there was no other way. We didn't miss like a hallway or something, did we? No, that's, that's there was the another way. door back down in that that one room, but. Um, to, to keep going this way, we have to, that's the only way to go. Yeah. I don't know. It's up to you guys. What I'll if move... you, someone snuck down there, like carefully moved down the hall so that maybe the, the trap doesn't detect them? Anything's possible. Um, maybe, do you still have your mage armor up? Uh, it should be you or I, because we have the be best. <gasps> Ooh. So all the rounds, is... all the rounds we just uh, took part in, you don't have to roll for that, but roll for right now. And Brom, roll for... Um... I mean, when your turn comes up, Amriel. And Brom, roll for your protection from evil, too. What if we threw the um, Ettercap body down the hall? Maybe cause it to spring on that. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Does it look like there's places on the wall that the bull couldn't reach if, if I climbed high enough on the wall or something? 
Yeah, uh, the ceiling's 15 feet high, and the bull's only 10 feet tall. I like that idea. Sure. How how would you pull that off? With my fast feet. <laughs> fast feet could climb up to the top of the, the wall and then just move sideways down the high hallway. Yep. Yep. Okay, so, Brahm, you done? Um, yes. All right, Amriel. Do your focus check, and then your turn. Or no, it's uh, not a focus check. It's just a round. Never mind. Just count one yeah, round off. Yeah, yeah. My focus is down. Okay. Uh, I asked the my, ask uh, Bluto if he could uh, drag that uh, Ettercap body along with us. <laughs> yes. And uh, I can I can throw it in there. So take your turn, and then he'll go do that. Um, and then I'm gonna double move to here, and yeah, and, and if he can grab the body, I don't know if he okay. has enough action to toss it down, but. So when you step there, it. roll the d6, uh -huh. and you want to roll high. Uh oh. Oh, no. You hear it coming before it gets to you, so you're going to make a dexterity saving throw with advantage. DC <laughs> is... Let me double check. DC is 15, dexterity saving throw to get out of the way before the bull crashes into you. I, I see the end of my life coming. Um, uh, here's my um, dex save. Uh, wasn't prepared for this. DC 15, dex save with advantage. Ooh, uh, nice. You made it. That's a 18 with advantage. So, Amriel, you dive out of the way as the bull charges and impales the wall behind you. Um, and then it's there for a second as it's trying to wrest its horns out of the wall. Uh, so consider it right in front of you guys. Amriel, you dodged out of the way. You've moved so far. Basically one move, I think. Do you want to do any action? Uh, this is um, not what the bull looks like, but I'll put him here for your reference. The bull looks like an actual bull, not a minotaur. I'm going to maybe... Uh, is it like animated like it's yeah it's like an animated like a golem almost and it's resting its horns out of the wall it looks like it's it doesn't seem like it's paying attention to anyone now so you're not sure what it'll do once it gets its horns out of the wall um i'm gonna uh toss and remember my, this is the I, one that had the skeleton impaled upon its four on its horns so the skeleton is between him and the wall right now yeah <laughs> i'm gonna i have a bag of caltrops i bought last time i'm gonna throw try to throw the caltrops like under it and behind it. Like, I don't know if I have to pick a particular square, I'd like to aim for this one or this one. Gotcha. Consider it done. Fast feet, what do you want to do? Oh, let me move around the corner so I can see. It's stuck in it's, the wall now? Yeah, getting its horns out of the wall right now. A towering bronze statue of a bull. Can we tie its legs off? Yep, I'm going to try and tie it up. Okay. Uh, make a dexterity check with advantage. And we'll do that against his strength check. Okay. He got a 14, but you got a 22. So nice. you got him tied up. Uh, so the statue is tied up and it's trying to break free the ropes, you think? All right, uh, you quick, can see, everybody. You can see the skeleton impaled on its forehead, hiding whatever is behind this, the skeleton. Um, you know that the other bulls have gems there. Oh, yeah, right. And that was your action fast feet. Finish your move where you want. Now, Cor, your turn. You can move through this thing's space now that it's kind of uh, restrained. And uh, I'm sorry, once again, so normally there's a gem in the... Yeah, the last bull statue had a gem right in its forehead, that sapphire. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, you can't see its forehead. Oh, okay. Because there's um, a skeleton impaled on its horns. So those caltrops, am I going to have to deal with those if I move through? How does that caltrops work, Amriel? Do you know? I'll look them up while you're Oh, working. sorry, no, I don't. Yeah, I didn't see any description really in the... Um... It's in the equipment section. Yeah, but I didn't see anything like about like what they damage do. or... yeah. Oh, caltrops. Tiny triangular shaped living creatures who step on caltrops take one damage, can only move at half speed for 10 rounds. If you move at half speed, you can be safe moving through the caltrop squares. Okay. So um, consider one square half space to be safe of stepping on any. I think I will move. Oops. Or make it two squares. It should be a 10 by 10. And one of them was in the in the Minotaur. I'll stay here, actually, and I'll try to uh like look at the bowl and move the skeleton and try okay. to see if I can... you move up to it and you pry the skeleton off of it that's your action now you can see that there's the gem there it'd be an action to pry it out you okay. finish your move you have any movement left and that round is over and brahm your turn i'll stay here i'll pry the gem out of the forehead you get it an emerald gem uh worth 120 gold and you guys get another xp and you can move your speed finish your move where you want then amriel your turn i have I'm okay move half speed through here Half speed through here. Yep. And then full speed after 30, that. And then 30 feet. That's yep. all as far as I can get. Not sure where your torch went. I, a torch, there, right? I think it's under me. 
There you go. Okay, Amriel, go ahead. Uh, I, I'm so sorry about the caltrops. I just <laughs> said. No, that's a good idea. Knee jerk reaction. Um, I uh, can I gather them up or yeah. is it one? Yeah, you can make it a, you can make an action to gather them up. So move uh, Jason right. to him and gather him up, and then uh, your buddy will move up Jason to you there, and then fast feet. Okay, here I go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's as far as I do. I have a torch still. Mm, you Maybe should. I didn't pick it up. There's next one. Go. Well, oh, that's where that thing is supposed to be, and there's no other way to go. So <laughs> after fast feet, Malcolm. Um, the skeleton is the skeleton wearing. Don't forget like, your torch, fast feet. Oh yeah. Is the skeleton like wearing stuff that I could rummage through, or is it it's just? It's not. Oh. You don't see anything of uh, note on it. All right, then I'll just move. Backward moves around. Can, I can move full though, right? Because you can double move. Yeah, already... yeah, and okay. full speed. And then Brom, your turn. Uh, all right, moving to the west. <clears throat> Fifteen over that character. Twenty twenty-five thirty. Double move. All right, Amriel. I guess that's one way to set off the trap <laughs> or to disarm it. Uh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I'm going to double move. Go for it. But I'm just going to go to here. I'm done. After you comes fast feet. Is that going up? Yeah, there's stairs going up, and it looks like uh, an exit you have found. Ooh. Oh, nice. Uh, let's see the north exit. There's a shattered door lying on the ground, and then beyond that, it's outside. Oh, good. Okay. Always good to know where an exit is. Don't forget your torch. Yeah. After fast feed. Melkor, go ahead. Uh, question. When we pried the gem out of its head, did it seem like it was dis... Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I should have described that. When you, As soon as you pry the gem loose, it stops. It's no longer animated. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, I'll move uh, up here to... Double moving. Rounds over. Rom, your turn. Uh, yeah. Okay, moving west. Are we going to have torches to get out after we um, go deeper? I have a lantern with two flasks of oil. And I have the light spell and two torches. Okay. I have one more torch after the one I currently have. Just making sure. The door to the south here. Um, I must have left my torch somewhere. Uh, where's my torch? Oh, is it my turn? No, it's it Rom's turn right now. Okay. There's two torches over here. Yeah, I'm not right. sure. Uh, so another chamber up here, a door to the south. Check the door. Double move. I'm done. All right. Fast feet. No, Emriel, your turn. Emriel. Okay. Uh... Uh, there's a door there, and there's something over there. Um, I'm going to just stand and listen to see if I hear anything other than us, mostly coming from the west. Got it. Uh, no, nothing other than you. Okay, I'm done. Fast and feet. my... Go ahead, fast feet. Are we um, gathered here? Yeah. I'm going to open this door. Uh, just a empty hallway beyond the door, fast feet. He pulls. We Have we been here? There's no statue. I don't think so. Okay. Fast feet. Now, Corey, your turn. I will move. The deep holes fast feet are on the, are on the north wall, as if whatever hit, made them came from the south. Oh, okay. Interesting. Now, Corey, double uh, moving? Yeah, I'll double move. All right. And then, Brom, your turn. Move into the... Oh. oh. There's another trap to the south there, probably. Probably. We want to we want to risk it, try to get it to, to charge, and then grab its gem. Those are pretty nice treasures. Indeed. I'll double move to here. Okay. Amriel, your turn. Door. Oh, whoever... I'm sorry. Back enough for a second. Whoever... So since we disabled the thing by pulling the gem out, whoever's rope that was, that was... Oh, wait. Tied up This with. is backtrack. This is going back into the room. This yeah, is we've been here. Room. We shut that door. So we already got this. So let's go west. You mean north and then west? Bye. Yeah, west looks like it's a dead end down that way. But... Oh. Are you done, Amriel? Yes. Fast feet. Uh, it looks like your torch is separated from you. I'll put that yes, again. I don't know how I managed that. <laughs> Unless you took Brahms. I've taken Brahms. When you drag over, you have to be kind of careful. That you only drag over your token. Oh, okay. You have to be extra careful. So, like, come from an empty square adjacent to you, onto you. That's the best way to do it. <clears throat> and if you get any part of your square, you'll get you and your and your torch. If you get okay. any part of someone else's square, you'll get them and their torch. Oh, and you can grab okay. their torches, but you can't grab them. That's why you can sometimes drag a person, other person's torch. All right, done. All right, uh, Malcor, your turn. Um, so, yeah, sorry. Like, uh, what I was trying to say earlier was um, Fast Feet, I think, used rope to tie up that Minotaur, but then we pulled the gem out, which disabled it. So oh, yeah, we can, we can say back. Fast Feet got his 
go back. Okay. Um, all right. I think the singed rope. Mm-hmm. I can't believe you guys got that uh, sword out of there. That's awesome. Yeah, that was pretty awesome. That was rough. It's good, good teamwork there. Yeah. I think I'm going to go. I can't make it this turn. I was going to see if I could go down there, and that seems a little suspicious. That dead end down there. Can I? If I search from here, how much area would I cover? Um, you can look at the far wall from there. It might not be as effective, but you don't see anything. Can you look? Okay. Then that's my turn. Okay. After Malcor, Rahm, your turn. Okay. Which way are we going? Are we going to go back through this door and check the unopened door we had? Or do we want to go up to the north to the west? Oh, this it looks way. like everybody's going north to the west. Okay. I don't want to get lost again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rahm's moving. Wait, the door's closed. I don't know who closed the door, right? That was accidental. It's fine. Right. Or the beast man did it. <laughs> he doesn't like open doors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He just follows behind you guys and shuts doors. <laughs> All right. So, six, so, Brom double moves. He's wondering if Amriel has any more of that sweet rations. Is he yeah. looking kind yeah, of like anxious? Yeah, he, he is a little bit. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. All right. I, I give him a ration. Okay. You know, it's, it's more where that came from. He's happy about uh, that. And, uh,. Malcor, are you okay? Do you, uh, does Malcor have light? He does. Yeah, I see. All right. All right. Then I'm going to just go north and scream if anything happens. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you have light, Brom? Are you supposed to have light? Because you left it behind. I'm supposed to have light. Oh, man. I put it back on you. I did my I did my thing. It didn't work. Huh, weird. Try it better. I will come up with a better way of doing light sometime in the future. And real. Uh, uh, I'll do I, 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 giving the beast man a ration is probably my action, so I'm just yeah. gonna move to there. And he follows by you. Fast feet, go ahead. Malcor, fellas. <clears throat> That's enough. After fast feet, Malcor. I will move one over and then search, search. and then move uh, five more. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nothing with your search. No okay. secret doors. After Malcor, that is over. Brom, your turn. Amriel, I'm your gonna turn. Move. Okay. Uh, um, I want to double uh, move. <laughs> go ahead, Amriel. You can move while Brom's uh, moving. Yeah, I'm in the dark, but I'm going to just follow the wall here. I'll be there in a sec. And double move. There you go. Then fast feet. Which way do we want to go? Try West? South first. South? Okay. Malcor, you can right, go while fast feet's going. Okay, I'll double move. While you're double moving, Brom, Brom, you can go. And Amriel. Uh, one, two, three, four, six, seven. Where's the door? Good. I'm done. I double Double then move. fast feet. Check the door. Check the door. Okay, the door here. When you get to that door, it has. It's a hefty stone slab. A little bit different than the other doors that you've seen here. Most of the doors in this place are, um, well, they're mostly stone, I guess. So yeah, I guess it's the same hefty stone slab. But this one's got a keyhole that's big enough for you to see through. Oh, well, uh, it's also cold and damp to the touch, and. Looking through the keyhole, you see darkness in the room beyond with a few points of bobbing red light spaced Ooh. about the width of a person's eyes apart. Oh, You'd say there's shit. some things with red eyes in there, uh, about human height on them. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, you're not sure. Okay. That's fast. Now, Cor, go ahead. Uh, did Malcor. I miss you guys? Yeah, did I miss? Are you going to yell out or anything? Yeah, yeah. we're... we're like, hey, wait for me! The, uh, the beast man says, shh. Quiet, the Red Devil will find us. Uh, you guys hear, Malcor, you hear them to the south and east of you. So if you go back, oh, I see. backtrack okay. to the tunnel that goes south, they're that direction. And another extra check for encounters, because of a loud noise. Nope, no encounter. Um, Malcor, you double move, though, so you're done. Rounds over. Brom, your turn. Still no sight of Malcor, but you heard him to the west and north. Double move. Double move. There you see him. You can finish your double move back towards the party if you want. Yeah. Uh, Amriel, your turn. Uh, I'm going to move over a couple, and I'm going to cast Mage Armor again, because I'm feeling very... There you Your Mage Armor is back up. Text 10 rounds. Okay, Amriel's done. Fast feet. Your I'm going to wait for talking. everybody. You, yeah, we okay. should wait. Uh, Malcor, go ahead. All right, I'll close this door as I walk by it. Okay. I'll stop there. All right, after Malcor, round is over. Rom, your turn. Then Amriel. I'm waiting. Oh. Then fast feet. Are we going to test the door with the red dots or we just gotta bypass it say it's too dangerous uh, i'm thinking it's probably pretty dangerous so how, how many how many sets of red dots did you see at least three three red dots i mean three pairs three pairs could be more uh i asked pluto do you know do you know what's in there no we don't go through there okay it's blocked 
kind of want to go in there, but um, okay. if no one else wants to, that's fine. As long as we have other options, let's explore those first, yeah? Okay. All right, Fast Feet, you're moving. Mapmaker. You can see this room ahead of you, Fast Feet. Um, you see tangled heaps of, of uh, skeletons. Um, there's a bronze dagger sticking in the wall to your left. Um, you can just make out an alcove on the far side of the room. There's some splintered weapon racks in that thing. In total, you'd think there's maybe a dozen skeletal remains on the floor. Some Yikes. cut completely in half. All of them adorned in tatters, tatters of red-dyed armor. Uh, there's some scattered shields, some scattered short swords. That's what you see. Now, Cor, your turn. Okay, question. All this bronze, is that because we're in like a Bronze Age technology kind of situation? Or does that seem like thematic oh. to the... It's thematic to the location. Um, right. Yeah. Not all your weapons are bronze. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if, uh, I don't know, like they might not be magical, but maybe bronze like helps with something. Uh, okay, I'll just move forward. Double moving from Alcor into the bam. Yeah. Brom, your turn. Double, double moving move. for Brom, I assume. Amriel, your turn. Uh, I'm going to double move, probably. Done. All right. So you all can see the same thing now. This this chamber is filled with skeletal remains, about a dozen of them. There's a bronze dagger on the wall to your left, Amriel. There's some weapon racks in the far uh, alcove. And fast feet. Okay, I think uh, it's a good time to um, pull out that uh, bronze dagger. All right, you go up to the wall. It'd be the wall just south of Amriel, and then you can wrest the dagger out of there. You see there's also an alcove to the north and a doorway within it. Uh, more splintered wooden racks in that alcove to the north. Um, the walls, now that you're close to them with uh, pulling the dagger out, you can see there's scorch marks and scratches. There's deep sweeping gouges at chest and head height, uh, all seemingly random. Mm. So kind of battle. So place here, maybe. Malk, or your turn. Practice. Oh, I'll double move to this door. All right. Skeletons all around the main chamber. Weapon racks in the ho in the uh, niche you're in, and the door. The weapon racks have um, red shields with black bulls painted on them, and spears. Hmm. For yeah. Rom, your turn. Dozen skeletal remains on the ground. Weapon racks north and south. Uh, I'll just search where I am. Anything I can see inside the first. Part of the niche, and that's all I can do for right now. Okay. Um, check something. You find nothing of any significant value. Looking through the skeletal remains near you and the weapon racks. Then, Amriel, your turn. So I drew a circle. Is it like there's skeletons scattered about throughout the room, or is it like... All around the room. So basically okay. roughly evenly distributed around the 30 by 30, or 25 by 25 section of the room. Um, are they... like? Uh, I want to know like uh, what race they were, oh, and maybe looks like human. Uh, looks like they died in battle. Several are cut completely in half. They all wear tatters of red dyed armor. They have some of them shattered shields. Some have bronze short swords. Interesting. Um, and have we we've gone through these skeletons, and nothing bad has happened to anyone so far? Uh, Brahm and Malkor moved into the room where they're at. Nothing bad happened to them. Rom's been searching some of the area. hasn't seen anything yet. Okay, I am gonna. Well, I'm gonna start moving diagonally. Um, hopefully, my beastman friend Bluto is following me. Yep, he is. Okay, and this is just an alcove, right? No, no passage or door. Just an alcove. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. Your beastman comes over to the wall and opens a door there. How, how'd you know that was there? And then he says something in a harsh whisper, and it's answered. By someone else speaking in a harsh whisper further in the darkness there. Uh, oh. It just, it seems like a, just a hello, not any kind of a, anything else. Is uh, it in the, the Beastman language? Yeah, it just seemed like hello is all they were saying. Okay. Uh, all right. I, I'll, I'll say to the group so they're not alarmed, it seems that Bluto has some family down here. Fast feet, your turn. Nope, oh, there's more uh, Beastmen down here. Done. So uh, we'll do this interaction here. Um, as you move into the position, you can see, move you back so you, what you can see when you're there. There's a secret little tunnel um, that goes about 10 feet into a larger chamber. It stinks. I mean, Pluto was pretty stinky anyway, but it just reeks of urine and animal smells coming from that direction. You see a beast man that had been like standing near the secret door, maybe on guard. And Ludo and that beast man have been uh, saying hello and Pluto is pointing back towards you guys, and you guys get the dis distinct impression that it's 
beneficial what he's saying, not trying to like entrap you or anything like that. Like he's introducing you to his friends. And uh, they, after that, um, offer for you to follow them. Absolutely. Let's check it out. All right. So this guy backs up out of the way. We just come through. He went there, opened the door, and comes into there. And fast feet, you can finish your turn. Okay. So indeed, it reeks here. The hallway is silent and narrow. Uh, there's stale dead air here. The smells of urine and body odor are eye-watering. You see the floor has scattered rat bones and centipede husks. Uh, Beastman stands here, ragged, gray-furred. Uh, the whole place is just very quiet. Anything else, fast feet? You done, done. All right, now Corey, your turn. Uh, is listening at the door free action or? It'd be an action. Okay, never mind. Because I want to be able to double move. Oh, hold up just a second. Looks like you got Brahms torch. Oh, Let me move it. What the heck? So make sure you don't drag across Brahms yeah. square when you pick it yourself up. And then keep moving. Done. Done. All right, torch with you. There you go. And then rounds over Brahms, your turn. Double move down. Double move down. And then Amriel, your turn. Okay. Oh, sliver of an opening into another chamber. Like. Can I double move? Okay, uh, your beast man is um, pointing to you and pointing to his belly, and the other beast man's kind of looking at you, and you can hear their stomachs growl in the silent hall, like they're both pretty hungry. Double move into there, Ariel. Yeah. Feed him the rest of the other cat. Yeah, I, 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 double, move, I double move to there, and uh, yeah, I, I have one ration left, but I use I double move. So. All right, fast feet, your turn. I'll hand him some rations. All right. He takes it, greedily consumes it, and says, I will take you to our king. Okay. You guys want to go see the king? We will. Okay. Uh, And it's perfect time for the lights to run out. Yeah. So cross out whatever light you're using and start up another one. We'll take a quick last break, and then we'll wrap it up at the end of the next light. Right. So come back at, um, we'll just make a real quick bio break, so five minutes after. So come back at... um, Lights are out. You're, you're you're starting new lights just for the old ones go out. Who's going to light up any light sources? Uh, Amriel has a, a lantern she can light. Okay. I'll do uh, another light spell. Another light spell. Going to roll your light spell. Brom will fire up his final torch. So we got about one hour of real time. Torch for you. Uh-huh. Um, Melkor, you got your light spell out, so light spell for you. Amriel, you got actually a lantern, which is going to be lantern token, I do. So that's going to actually be 60 feet of light. Yeah. Right line, 60 feet. Save that. Tom Bram took Shield of Faith as a spell. Oh, nice. Okay. I struggled between that and light. <laughs> Light's super cool, isn't it? I mean, it's a nice it's... spell to have now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I just think having the extra plus two AC at times is going to be beneficial for my character, but it's they're both great spells in this game. Okay. So the um, Beastman is going to lead you to his leader, so go ahead and follow this guy going north out of the room. You can all move at the same time. Which way is he going? North out of the North. room, past Melkor. All at the same time? Yep, you can all move at the same time. <clears throat> I'm just going to make sure I don't get him out of your sight. Ah, hold on, I'm having a hard time. Wait. Come into the light! <laughs> Boom. Uh, did I leave my torch? God. Do you have a torch? I thought I did. Yeah, your torch is with you. Oh, okay. It's not... Here, I'll put it back in your square. There you go. Now you should be able to move with it if you drag over your square. There you go. All right, he takes you to the end of this hallway. So you can move up behind him to the end of that hallway. And then he just staggers to the north one step. And then on the wall to his left, he opens a secret door. Come on. And then he goes through the secret door into a room. You see some more beastmen there. He uh, introduces you as you go by. Then, let's see, let me just grab this room for you real quick. Uh, there's two shaggy, stooped humanoids listening sullenly here. The place is filthy. The ceiling's low, like only about eight, nine feet tall. It's got the smell of wet animals and dung. And he keeps going down the hallway and then to the south from that hallway and then to the west from there. So just head on down the hall. And he comes up to his king down in the sky. Thanks. Put a... Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Put a shield on him. He comes up to his king and he introduces you to the beastmen. You see 15 hunched, grave-furred humanoids chewing on centipedes and speaking in harsh whispers to one another. The one he comes up to lounges on a mat of rat pelts, and he's picking his teeth with rat bones. The room is grimy and cramped and scattered with rodent bones. It smells of unwashed bodies and urine. He says, King Rogath, these are adventurers. They have traveled through the maze of the Red Devil. And Rogath says, have you seen the Red Devil to the leader of you? 
briefly. The red devil well, I, I, should die. Would you assist us in killing him? I look back at everybody. Uh, I think I think the answer is yes, right? Yes, we would. Yes, we would assist you. Well, let's talk about this. I mean, <laughs> he says very good. Uh, Gabo, Barto, Rock, Dent, Nila, Ludo, Billo, Alda, go with them and bring back me the head of the bull. And Boy. a whole bunch of beastmen go with you. Let's see here. Thanks. Two, three, four. Okay. So the beastmen all start falling out of the room past you, back toward the way you came, and line up at the door to the central chamber. Two, five. You guys can take up your spots um, just past them. Six, seven. Unless you want to go first. But there it looks like they're willing to go first. That's very so kind of three, them. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So they're going to go through a door okay. that's on the south end of this hallway uh, that Ariel's looking down. Yeah. So I'm going to move you guys yeah. to the hallway so you can just see it. So in this hallway, they're coming toward this end. And they're going to go through a door that goes into the central chamber. Okay. And they look back and they wait till you're ready. And their king uh, moseys on over. And should I? Oh, so go ahead. He'll give them the command to go as soon as you're ready. So let me know when you're ready. How many rounds have gone by if I'm, for my mage armor? Should I just recast it? No. It'd be good to recast it. Yeah, it'd be almost wearing out yeah, okay. by now. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to catch Shield of Faith on myself. If you, yeah, go ahead. Uh, no. Of oh, course. No, no mage armor. <laughs> <laughs> right when you need it. Oh, no. Yeah. Second time that last session this happened. Oh, that's good. Does anyone want to be any closer than you are now? I can move Beastman out of your way if you want to be any closer. Uh, where's the door at? At the bottom of the, the bottom of the there? hall and to the left one square. Uh, yeah. Let me, let me go there. Okay. If you want to be any closer, you can just let me know. Should be good. And I'll put a marker. Everyone good? Yeah. All right. You hear the Beastman open the door and you hear some harsh whispers say, go, go, go. Um, or everyone roll initiative, please. <clears throat> okay. The Beastmen start piling into the room to kill the hated Red Devil. Two, three, four, six. And then hurls a spear at the Minotaur, hitting armor class 14, which hits the Minotaur and does six piercing damage to him. And then the next Beastman goes. One, two, three, four, six. Doesn't get within range, so he's done. Six, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they all move into the room and ready attacks for when the Minotaur comes at them. And then the Minotaur, you hear the charge of the Minotaur as it comes after probably the first Beastman that went into the room and makes a horn attack against him, doing only four damage. You hear the Beastman screaming in agony. And then the first of you go, Fast Feet. Come on, Fast Feet. Muted if you're talking. I'm going to turn invisible. Nice. Move. And that's as far as I okay. can go. Put the counter on you with a three. That's how long you'll be invisible for. After Fast Feet comes, Braum. Okay. Braum moves down. So, Brom, let me describe what you see, and everyone, this, you'll all see the same thing when you come in here. So, the central courtyard. Uh, here, dominating the courtyard on the north is a 20-foot-tall black onyx bull statue with rippling muscles. Its horns are lowered, and its horns have impaled upon them the skulls of creatures, mostly humanoid. You'd say probably mostly beastmen. Uh, the courtyard is sandy flagstones. It's sun-scorched. There's... Heaps of bleached bones all over the place. Anywhere you go, you could find heaps of bleached bones. The pillars are red. They're freestanding. Um, there's some scattered and crumbling. It casts cool, dark shadows here. The Scarlet Minotaur, nine feet tall, red fur, um, saliva spilling out of its mouth as it's got a beastman impaled on its horns there when you come into the room. It wields a bronze great axe. What do you want to do, uh, Brom? Is, is it in the... South? There it is. Okay. I'm gonna move to here. <clears throat> that's my that's my full move. Um I'm gonna just I guess double move. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not there's I'm gonna double move and move up to the statue and see if I can search for anything. Well, I can't search, it's an action, so I'll just double, double move into there. Okay. After Bra yeah. Malcor, your turn. Consider corners hard, Malcor, for your reference. You hear the scuffle of the fight happening to the south to your left when you get to that point. You see Brahma ahead of you, see several beastmen ready for something coming at them from the south. Then I will all double move it. Okay. Finish your move where you like. Amriel, your turn. Okay. I'm hoping I'm moving the right way. Two, three, four, five, six. 
okay, I see a bunch of people. They're definitely all ready for something coming at them from the left, from the south. Double move then, um, one, still don't see anything. Two, um, You can see the Minotaur now. I see him now. I wish I could have seen him 10 feet ago. <laughs> um, I am going to back up one. Okay. I can still see him there, and I'm done. Okay. Then the rest of the beastmen pour in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Double move into there. And that's it for them. That round is over. Then you got the beastman impaled on the bull. Has already threw a spear at the bull. Has no backup weapon, so tries to punch the bull. Uh, gets an 11, which does no effect. The Minotaur, he will multi-attack with his great axe twice. So first, he hurls this guy against the column with his horn. So do that attack first. That kills the beastman. And he swings the beastman next to him with his great axe. Uh, 11 to hit. I think the beastman just dodges it. Jumps behind the pillar to dodge it. Second great axe swing connects, though, and kills that beast man. Minotaur is raging. Saliva is flying in all directions. Blood all over the place. Uh, fast feet. Oh, did I miss the beast man? I killed the one that is an initiative time. Um, Oops. Well, let me fix this here. Add turn. Beast man there. Okay, so these other three. One, two. Bravely fall upon him. This guy's going to throw his spear. These guys are going to try and spear him with a spear. Miss. Hit for three and miss. So he took three more damage. And then the one that threw a spear missed and he's out of spears. Okay, so there we go. Got the beastman done. And now it's your turn, Fast Feet. All right. I am going to step up and try and backstab this beast. Nice. Uh, not uh, you're I invisible, so you'd have advantage. Um, and that is a 13 to hit with the advantage. Did you? Okay, you want to use your short sword? Uh, that's a miss, unfortunately. Well, my bow is burnt up, I believe. Anyway. <laughs> um, so 13 would be a miss. Okay. Not using your luck? Oh, sure. I've got luck. I'll use it. One more swing. One more try. All right. A 10's a miss. And Brom, your turn. Oh, and count down your invisibility by one. Will do. Brom's going to slide down the wall <laughs> over to here. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wait. Did you move fast feet? You did. Uh, I just got out of the way. Oh, okay. I'm going to move down to here then. I was going to cast Protection from Evil on you. So that'll give him disadvantage to hit. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Uh, it does not I'll work. Use, I'll use Lock because I don't have it to, use, okay. to do much. Go for with. it. Still does not work. Oh, no. Wait, I got a one. Oh, no. So now you can't cast it again until you make penance oh, no. for your fear. <laughs> <laughs> my, I'm, I'm shaking my boots and St. Dragnus said. Now go your turn. No fear. Okay. Right. So there is no um, attacks of opportunity, right? Correct. Okay, so I'm going to go one, two, five, six, three, four, five. And then I can attack and then finish my move. Is that yep. correct? Yep. Okay. So, hmm. Nine. Nine's a miss. All right. And then I'll back up uh, diagonally. Emeril, your turn. I uh, shout out in uh, Beastman, uh, you're doing well! Kill the red double! And I cast Magic Missile at it. All right, go for it. <laughs> um, you didn't make a macro, so I'm just going to roll a d20. Okay. <clears throat> That's, oh uh, no. We got uh, advantage on that, don't you? Yes, don't Magic Missile is always advantage, yeah. so roll again. All right. Um, I get plus three, so. Okay, there you made it. Nice. And it will take a D4. All right. Give me a D4. Three points of magic missile damage. Pink. Just like you guys have a lot less hit points, it does as well. So you're almost halfway down now. I think. Then the Beastman in blue. One, two, three. They go to surround it. This one's going to come here and throw out the door. This one's going to come here and throw his um, spear. So they may do the thrown spear first. Miss. And so he's out of ammo. And then we got the guys close. Uh, hit for three. Miss, miss, hit for five. So eight more damage to the bull, to the mentor. Wow. Good job, beastmen. And then the round is over. Then the other beastmen, the three in front, two, three. Uh, miss, miss, hit for five more. The bull's covered in blood now. Now the minotaur is going to go after the beastmen. Um, or, yeah, only the beastmen are adjacent. So it would go northwest, multi attack, great axe. Hit did four, not killing it. Swings his great axe at it again. Uh, miss, and then tries to hit it with its horns. Miss! Wow. Last feet, your turn. That's a lucky beast man. Okay, well, I'll move up next to it again. 
And someday I'm going to hit, and that day is now. Advantage. 12 is a okay. miss, unfortunately. Miss, still a miss. <laughs> I'll give you my luck. Or wait, oh, yeah. I used it. Oh, no. All right. After Fast Feet, Braum, your turn. Okay. Uh, don't. The only spell I have left is Cure Wounds, so nobody's in serious danger. Um, I'm not sure what I can do here. Um, I'm going to back up my friends. I'm going to get closer here. You Can you throw a longsword? <laughs> you can. Do anything you want. I'm going to move here and, and uh, like, lay my torch down to throw my freaking longsword at All right. Eye. Make an attack with disadvantage. Okay. At its eye. Nice. Yeah. I'm just going to make a longsword attack. Yep. Oh. Oh, flies high. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, Malcor, your turn. Okay. Move there. Attack. 11's a miss, Malcor. Dang. And then back up. Emriel, your turn. Do I still have advantage? Uh, Magic Missile always has advantage. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Then I hit, and here's another D4. Three points of another damage three. to the thing, distracting it from the beastman attacking it. Three, three. Then beastman in blue, attacking it. Two, three, four. One hitting it. And then other beastmen, uh, one more hitting it. And then its turn. It does a great axe in the first beastman, uh, killing him. Great axe in the second beastman, uh, missing. And then horns on the second beastman, killing him. And then these beastmen, uh, not in blue, are shaken by that. And front one wisdom check. Oh, they bolt. Looks like the ones not oh. in blue are fleeing. And then fast feet, your turn. All right, Fast Feet's going to take his last invisible backstab attempt. <laughs> Come on, 20. No. No. Uh, All right. Is... Um, after Fast Feet comes Brom. Okay. Um, Brom goes here, picks up the dead beast man's spear in this space. Okay. And hurls it at the Minotaur's eye. Go for it. I'm probably at disadvantage, though, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Can you use spears? If you're not, you're at disadvantage. I, don't think I, I, I can't. I'm a priest i can't use a spear all right train but i'll do it anyway go for it with disadvantage 14 that's it zero do you have a plus zero i have a plus zero so Uh, actually spear i think can use either it might use only strength though but we'll say either so that's a hit and roll your damage oh okay d6 one d6 i think right yep cool and with two damage you impale the eye of the minotaur and down he goes all right <clears throat> the red devil's dead. The beastmen are uh, excited. And you see one of the beastmen, uh, who was like one of the bravest ones, pick up uh, one of his dead comrades there and hacks off his head and takes it over to the bull statue and sticks it on the horn of the bull statue. And you can see him like grow in strength and power and he does that. Oh, wow. Now, you guys are in the central compound. You have all around you um, let me describe it again for you. 20-foot-tall bull statue, black onyx, rippling muscles, horns lowered and dotted with skulls. And you just saw another one put on the horns. Sandy flagstones, sun-scorched, heaps of bleached bones. There's heaps of bones everywhere, and whatever gear they were carrying. Red pillars, freestanding, some shattered and crumbling, casting cool dark shadows. And the Minotaur, with his two-headed bronze great axe. Let's cut off the Minotaur's head with the great axe, right? Okay, Done. Then are we supposed to take the head to the king? Um, yeah. Yeah. In fact, the king comes in behind you, so you have oh. the head. And let's go back into initiative rounds here. And Rom, it'll be your first turn. So we only want to do it, Rom. Um, retrieve my longsword. That's free. Okay. That's good. Um, I say king. I forget his name. Rogrith. I think, or was it the king? We have the head of the Minotaur of the Red Devil. <clears throat> the king is uh, beaming with. Uh, excitement that he's now the new ruler of the maze <laughs> oh, um, no. <laughs> after you fast feet um I, king can you reward us for our help in uh, defeating this beast you may take his gear the king says there's also all around you skeletons with whatever gear they were well i'm gonna start looking around see what, what i can find all right maybe a short bow. roll d4 for it. me you find a silvered long sword with a half moon pommel Ooh. that's a uh, one XP. Oh, and you guys getting the axe that was worth three. So now you're up to four in this room. That was you, fast feet, and then Amriel, your turn. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna search the room as well. Uh, search the skeletons. Roll a D4 for me. You find a scroll of burning hands in a bronze oh. tube adorned with jade dragons. So there's another XP five in this room, and then Malcor. I will 
Search as well. Roll d4. You find a bag of 60 gold coins stamped with a long with the long dead emperor's face. That's up to six. And then, Rom, your turn. Random encounter check. You're good. Rom, you search. You don't find anything with your search. It's getting kind of picked over now. Ask me. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to search the Minotaur's. The body. Minotaur's got the uh, two headed bronze great axe on him. Nothing else of value. Okay. And then, Amriel. Uh, I don't know if we've ever checked the statue out. I'm just going to search, search the, statue. the statue. Okay. Um, no secret compartments or anything of that sort. Uh, you can see many a skull impaled on the horns of the statue. Some quite old. The ones furthest in, quite old. The ones near the tip, of course, the one just put on. Um, other than that, nothing. Okay. Melkor. Um, do I have the option of searching again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can keep okay. searching. It's just okay. that it takes time and you might have a running mo- wandering monster. Oh, good call. Okay. Is there any skull? Anything that I can take the skull of and put on the... Uh, let's see, there's several dead... How many How many beastmen did he kill? I think he killed three total, maybe four. So there's three more beastmen skulls. Four, yeah. yeah, I'm going to try to... Oh, well, I don't know how they would like if I cut one of them. <laughs> well, one of them just did it in front of all yeah. the rest of them. Maybe it's a ritual that they like. Yeah, would they be offended if I did it? You know what? I'll try it. All right. They watch you. They don't stop you. You put it on the bull. Yep. You gain plus one to your strength. Excellent. Oh. And that's permanent, and that's a uh, seven experience now. Okay, after Malcor, Brom, your turn. I'm going to do the same thing in the hopes of gaining strength, because I'm, I'm weak for a priest. Go for it. Um, you gain one strength. Cool. No more XPs, but one strength for Brom. And there's one head left, except for the other ones you want to kill to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fast <laughs> feet, your turn. All right, it sounds gross, but I'll do it. Okay. You gain one point of strength, and there's no more freshly decapitated heads in the room. Uh, We should have let the Minotaur live a little, a couple (laughs) rounds longer. Amriel, your turn. (laughs) Um, I think we still have something we haven't discovered yet. That's a little meta, but uh, I'm going to search the room. You know, there's a lot more to search, so yeah, you could definitely search here for a while until you're done. Um, No more things down that round of searching. Malcor. Uh, I will search again. But yeah. how much? How long do we want to do this, guys? Before we, we're gonna have to head out pretty soon yeah. here. I'm sorry. It was a D4. Is that correct? D4, right? There we go. Boom. There you go. You find a scarred mithril shield carved with a prowling tiger with 40 gold, and that's eight XP for this room. All right. And did we get an XP for that shield? Uh, you did. You're up to eight total for this room alone. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. That's almost. Oh. Oh, I got one up a level. Oh, nice. If you went up a level, you can update your character to the next level. You can roll your hit dice. Uh, no encounter next round. Rom, what do you want to do? I'll uh, search. Roll a d4. Nothing else. Fast feet. Um, less time. D4. Nothing else. Fast feet. All right, let's get out of here. Then you can move your speed fast feet. Emeril, your turn. Uh, she's going to start heading out. Um, and I think she also leveled. It's 10 for a second level as well. 20. 20 for a second level. Oh, okay. She's only halfway then. Okay. Uh, uh, one. Malcor, what would you get for hit points? Oh, I haven't rolled it yet. Uh, it. it was D6. A priest is a D6 and no con Two. Two. So you have to four out of four. So you go. Um, Amriel, Amriel moved. Uh, Malcor, your move. Yeah, I'm moving out of here. Go for Oops. it. Then, let's see if there's a roster. No. Rom, your turn. I'm going to start heading out. All right. Assuming you're double moving. Fast feet, go ahead and go. Assuming you're double moving. Amriel, go ahead and go. You're probably waiting for a light, though. I'll wait till they get to you at least. Wait, wait. We're going all the way up, right? Does somebody okay. know how to get to that exit we found? Yeah, I think I have it. Good, and everyone That's go. Amriel. And Malcor, you can move too. Yeah, Amriel. All right. Which way? We go to the top and to the right. All right, yep. yep. Okay. And then let me roll for a random monster. Good. And then Bra. And all of you, you can basically make it out because you can see the exit. And that's Sweet. the end of the Lost Citadel. You killed the Red Devil, you took the treasure, you got the Great Axe, and you got the Great Sword. You got a scroll of... Burning Hands. Burning Hands. Um, yep. You got a whole bunch of XPs and split up the treasure. Yep. So everyone just roll straight D20. We'll see who gets these three items. Straight. And I'll tell you what you find out about them. So Malcor, you're first. You find out that... Now, none of you probably can use the two weapons, unfortunately, but the Great Axe is plus one. And does times four damage on a crit instead of times two. Wow. 
Oh, my goodness. So that's the Great Axe. And, of course, you can always trade this to another character if you ever adventure with another character that, when I'm running. And then um, the long or the Great Sword is a plus one Great Sword called Asterion. And the creature cannot move you against your will while you wield it. And then, of and the, course, the Squirrel of Burning Hands. And the, the shield? Uh, not magical. But it's Mithril, so does it mean it does... It's worth 40. You'd have to take that instead of gold, I guess. Yeah, it's worth some gold. I, no, oh. I think Mithril means that it doesn't take inventory slots. It, Let's see. I, gear slots, Mithril, metal armor only. It doesn't... I don't know if that applies to shields or not. don't think it does. Probably not. No. Because shield only has one slot. It applies to chainmail and plate mail, though. If it were yeah. Mithril. So it's worth some gold, though. And we'll split that up. All right. I guess I'll take the great great, great axe or great sword or scroll of the, burning hands. Oh, can I use? How does that work? Can I? If I'm a priest, can I use burning hands since no. it's not online? Okay, no. then yeah, I'll take the great sword because okay. that at least has some benefit, regardless if I could use it. Uh, then Brom, great axe or scroll. What was the the silver long sword? Was that just worth money? Just with money, yeah. Okay, I, I missed how much it was worth. But... It was worth. Um, silver long sword with half moon pommel, thirty gold. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't. I I have no use for any of the weapons or the or the scroll. So you don't want I pass? guess. I'll, yeah, I think I'm just going to okay. pass. Okay. Uh, then next goes Malcor. I mean, uh, Amriel. Great sword plus five. Uh, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll take the the scroll. Scroll no, of no burning question. hands. Fast feet. You yeah. want the great sword for trade bait? Uh, I guess so. Okay. Wait, hold on. I took I took the sword, right? Oh, great axe then, fast feet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can barely carry it. I know. Sure. <laughs> I think a great axe might be two slots. Let me see. It is. It, it is, is two slots, yeah. And the great sword is two slots too. All right. That's the end. Thank you guys for playing. Um, uh if I run good. again, I'll let you know. We just get three hundred and seventy worth of treasure. Three three seventy total divided by four. Yeah. That's with the that's with the long sword being worth thirty and the uh shield worth forty. Yep. Then the sixty gold and the two emeralds for one twenty eight. And did you get the bronze tube adorned with jade dragons worth eighty? Nope. Okay, have that in there. So four fifty divided by four oh, it's is a hundred and twelve and a half. One one uh yeah. One hundred and twelve and yes. Okay, so everyone's going to get 112.5 gold pieces. I'll put a summary in the chat again for you guys. And I think uh, Brom and Malcor and Passfeet all get plus one to their strength permanently. Uh, yes, that takes, takes me from nine to ten. That's actually kind of nice. That's pretty yeah. beneficial, yeah. To take and the penalty away. Passfeet, I'd, I'd go buy yourself a dagger for combat attacks because you could use your decks for the attack bonus on that. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I can see why you think a short sword should because in D&D it does, but not in Shadow Dark. Yeah, sure. okay. Um, I'm probably going to Tom take the silver longsword and the mithril shield and just take 70 gold off my 112. That's fine. And just me. keep those as items because I, I kind of like those. I've, I can use both of them and they're from the uh, they're from this dungeon. So that's pretty cool. That's cool. All right, guys. Uh, can I? Yeah. Go ahead. Can I make the intelligence roll real quick to see if I can learn the spell? You bet. Go for it. Nice roll. I learned it. Made it. That's really cool. How now wow. you have burning hands is another spell. So yeah. you have like what five spells? One, two, three, four. Yep, I know five. Nice. Nice. All right, guys. All right, Thank you game. for playing. And yep. thanks, uh, awesome. yeah, thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Fun time. Thanks.